Welcome to Lecture Online. Things usually make a lot more sense when you see examples and now we're going to do an example for the video we just saw, video number four. So in this case we're still going to look at the relationship between the slope and the limit, but in this case we're going to do a real example. So the function we have here is f of x equals x squared, which is a simple parabola. We found a point on the parabola, let's call it point p, which has coordinates x and y, and let's say that in this case the coordinates uh, p x will be equal to 2, and when we plug in 2 into our function, 2 squared equals 4, that means the y value for that point will equal 4. So what we want to do here is find the slope at the point p when x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 4. Now in general we're going to call the x coordinate x, we're going to call the y coordinate y, so y equals f of x, and then we're going to pick a point a little bit further along the function called q. So the x coordinate of that function will have x plus delta x, delta x being a very small value. And then the y value for that point will be f of x plus delta x, the function evaluated at the new x coordinate x plus delta x. And so what will be the slope at point p? Well, again, what we're going to do is we're going to find the slope of the tangent line between, or not the tangent line, but the secant line between point p and point q. And then we're going to bring q closer and closer closer to p in such a way that when they get really close together in the limit, when the difference in delta x goes to zero, the slope of the tangent line between p and q, or I should say secant line, keep calling it tangent line, the slope of the secant line between point p and point q should equal the slope of the tangent line here drawn in red. So what we're going to do here is calculate the slope of the secant line. So for the secant line, the secant line slope, that's going to be equal to slope is equal to the change in y over the change in x. Of course, that's the rise over the run. And the change in y will be this distance right here. So when I draw a little triangle here, this here will be considered the change in y, delta y. And this distance right here is called the change in x, so this could be called delta x. So we can simply say that the slope of that secant line between p and q is going to be equal to the ratio of the rise, delta y, over the run, delta x. Now delta y can be found by saying this is equal to, um, and this is the secant, secant line slope, is equal to the function evaluated at x plus delta x minus the function evaluated at x. Of course, it's a difference between f of delta x plus delta x minus f of x, this would be the rise. The, the run will simply be the change in the x values, which is simply delta x. So that will give us the slope of the secant line. But of course, we're not interested in the slope of the secant line. We're interested in the slope of the tangent line at p where the line touches p. We want to know the slope of the function at that particular location. So the slope at p, the slope at p therefore is equal to the limit as delta x approaches zero. We're going to take this, the same ratio right here, but we want to find the ratio in the limit as delta x becomes really, really small when delta x approaches zero of f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x. And that's what we saw in the previous video. Now, what does that mean for us here in this particular function? Remember that f of x was equal to x squared. That means that f of x plus delta x can be found by replacing every x by x plus delta x. So let's go ahead and do that. So we take the x plus delta x and substitute it in for x. We have to square that. So in this case it becomes x squared plus 2 times x delta x plus the quantity delta x squared. Now when we subtract the two, let's see what we get. So this is equal to the limit as delta x goes to zero of f of x plus delta x, which is equal to this quantity right here. So this is x squared plus 2x delta x plus the quantity delta x squared minus f of x. And of course, f of x was equal to x squared. And we take the whole thing and we divide it by delta x. So we know now that the slope at point P right here, which is the slope of the tangent line, can be found by taking Q moving it really close to P and then finding the slope between those two points, which in the limit, as delta X goes to zero, will become equal exactly to the slope of the, of the function at that point. And that's what we have here, the limit as delta X goes to zero of this quantity right here. 
Now let's see that we have an x squared here minus an x squared there, so the x squares cancel out, which means that this is equal to the limit as delta x goes to 0 of 2x delta x plus the quantity delta x squared all divided by delta x. So now we can go ahead and divide the denominator into the numerator because each term in the numerator has a delta, delta x in it. So this is equal to the limit as delta x goes to 0. When I divide this into here, I get that's of 2x plus delta x squared divided by delta x is equal to delta x. So now I know that the slope at p is equal to this right here. Now, notice if I now take the limit of that, that will simply be equal to, notice I'm now going to let delta x go to 0. So when delta x goes to 0, this becomes 0, and I end up with 2x. Now, you say, well, wait a minute. The slope at p, how can that be 2x? Well, what is the value for x at p? The value for x at p was equal to 2. So therefore, if I want to find the slope at p, I plug in the x value for x. And so therefore, we can now say that the slope at p, the slope, oops, let me write that again. The slope at p, where x is equal to 2, is equal to 2 times 2 or 4. So by going through this calculation where I find the limit when delta x goes to 0 of f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x and then I evaluate for x because I want to find the slope at p where x is equal to 2 then I know the exact slope at that point. And so that's what we mean by the concept of the limit in calculus. What we're saying here is the limit here means that we're going to take the, the point Q and move it closer and closer and closer and closer to the point P in such a way that when the distance between them becomes infinitesimally small, when then delta x goes to zero, the slope of the secant line between Q and P will exactly equal the slope of the tangent line. And when it does, we can find the exact slope of the tangent line at point P, which is therefore the exact slope of the function, at point P. And that's how it's done.